I wonder when the last time that we just stopped and told the Lord how much we love Him, how much we adore Him. If you're saved today, there shouldn't be anything that means more to you than your relationship with Jesus Christ. I love Him and I adore Him. I guess if there was a song to be my, my theme, it would be that this morning. And I'm glad He's been faithful to me. To every promise he ever made me. He's never left me. He's never forsook me. Man, I love him this morning. He's so good. He's filled me with things that I don't deserve. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound. The choir sang, saved by grace, sinner by grace, whatever they sang. <laughs> Just a sinner saved by grace. Thank you. The only thing that separates us and everybody else in the world today is the grace of God. And the only reason we're not in the world still is the grace of God. And I'm so thankful. Oh, I love him this morning. So thankful for what he's done. He's been good to me. I look around, I see the salvation he's given me. I see the security he's given me. I see the family he's given me. God's been good. And we ought to celebrate that we serve a risen Savior this morning. We ought to be excited that we know Jesus. We ought, it ought to erupt within our hearts and our minds to simply think about what the Lord has done for us. God's been so good. I want to read the same scripture we read last week. Stand with me. What a holy word we have in our hands today. If there's anything worth standing up for, it's the word of God this morning. I want to go back and begin in verse 18. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God, and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, Love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. Lord, thank you for your love that you have showered down upon us. Lord, I just thank you this morning for being good and faithful in my life. Thank you for saving me. Lord, I just pray that you would always be the Lord of my life. I pray, Lord, that you would be the preeminence of me wherever I go and whatever I say. I pray that you would be first of all in me. Lord, give me the power to preach your word this morning the way you designed it. Lord, I pray your will and way in this service today. Lord, I pray we allow your Holy Spirit to move in this place. Lord, your word tells us that you will be here among us. But Lord, I remember your word when you went home. And you could do no mighty work there. Lord, you went home to the people that you loved and you tried to save them. You tried to mold them. You tried to change them. But they would not let you do a mighty work there. Lord, I pray we would let you do a mighty work this morning. Lord, I pray we would allow your spirit to have full reign in this place. Lord, I just pray that we would let you just to be the preeminence of everything today. Oh, Lord, I pray the souls will be saved. Lord, I pray we'll be drawn closer to you. Thank you for loving us and saving us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. I want to continue our study on the family. And I want to speak to you on the subject, what every marriage should have. What every marriage should have. And I want to thank you this morning for all of the uh, the words that you've given me about this study and this series and the uh, reception that it has had. And thank you for receiving it the way you have. Uh, several come out last week, uh, mostly men, 
said, boy, you've been rough on us, preacher. You've been tough on us. And uh, when is it the women's turn to get it? And, uh, but I'll tell you, we all need it sometimes, don't we? And we all need to apply these words. And my conviction and my burden is for every family in this place. My conviction is bur and my burden this morning is for every family around us. I want you to know something. That Satan devours to have your family today. And my prayer, this preacher's prayer and burden, is not to get up here and down you, not to get up here and humiliate anybody, but my burden today is that our families will, would look to thus saith the Lord and allow the Word to have its way in our marriage and in our homes. We're losing our homes. We need to get it back. The only way to get it back is going to the Lord. He is our only hope this morning. Amen? He is the only hope that we have. If your marriage is going to make it, you better get to the Word of God this morning. If your family is going to make it, you better get to the Word of God. I'm so glad that when I look in Scripture and I see all of the commands that we have in the Word of God, and there's so many commands, I think it's 611 or 12 commandments in the Old Testament, over 1,050 commandments in the New Testament that God, things that God told us to do. You see, God has instructed us and He's told us how to live life. But what I love about the Word of God and what I love about the Lord is the Lord didn't say, go do this, but you just figure it out on your own and you do the best you can. You see, God told us to get married. Marriage is an institution from the Lord. And God didn't say, okay, y'all get married and y'all figure it out the best you can. God didn't do that. God gave us instruction. God gives us tools to fulfill His Word. Everything that God has commanded, I want you to know that He has enough grace bestowed upon our life for us to fulfill those commands. If you're going to fulfill this today, it's not going to be completely up to you. You're going to need the help of the Lord. We're going to need the tools that He has provided for us so that we can apply to our marriage so that our marriage can be successful. Do you want a successful marriage this morning? About four of you do. That's good. Y'all want a successful marriage this morning? I don't think anybody ever goes into marriage thinking this is going to fail. I think every time that we get to those vows and we get to that ceremony, everybody's looking at it that this is going to last forever. And friend, that's God's desire this morning, that nothing but death would divide your family. Nothing but death would divide your home. And I pray that's what takes place in our homes and in our marriage. There are some things that I believe that we need in our homes that will help our home to be successful to give God honor and glory. I want you to notice here in verse 21, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Number one, what we need in our homes is leadership. Leadership is a tool that God designed to put in our homes. In every institution that we find in the Word of God, there is leadership. There's leadership that He put in the church. There's leadership that He put in the home. There's leadership that He put in our society and governments. God designed for us to have leadership in our life. Now I want you to hold your place there and look in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want you to notice this beautiful verse here. And I know when we're born into this earth and this world, there's some pride within us that we don't like to follow. But I want you to know that God has placed leadership in our life. And we need to understand what God has done. We need to understand that God has placed people above us for a reason. I want you to notice what he said in verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. You see, God has designed for there to be leadership in our life. Number one, the Lord ought to have full and complete authority over our home. 
You say, well, the man is the leader of the home. Friend, Jesus should be the leader of the home. If anybody has full authority and full dominion over our home, it ought to be Jesus Christ. He ought to have full authority and the, uh, the privilege and allow Him to lead and guide us in our homes. I'm afraid today the reason that homes are failing in the way that they have been is because the Lord is not the leader of the home. Many men look at this and say, well, I'm the head. No, friend, Jesus is the head. The head of every man is Christ. If you think you're the boss, your marriage and home's going to fail. We need to let Jesus be the boss. We need to let Him be the Lord and King of our family and our marriage. If we got a shot today, it's going to be when we give it to Jesus and allow Him to lead us. You heard the uh, statistic that I gave about marriage. 60% of marriage ends in divorce. Isn't that horrible? But it gets better if you're faithful to the Lord. It says among Christians that go to church and are faithful, only 30%. That proves right there that you have a better shot at making it when you submit yourself to the Lord. But let me tell you about that 30%. I believe that 30% gave up somewhere allowing the Lord to be the leader of their home. I believe when the man and the woman together come together and understand that God needs the preeminence of our home, that's when our home will be a success. I believe that we need to make Lord, the Lord, our God, and our King, and our leader in our homes. He needs dominion over us. You don't need to lead the marriage, wives. You don't need to lead the marriage, men. You need to let God lead you. He needs to have dominion over our home. He needs to have the preeminence of everything. So how is it today that we allow the Lord to lead us? Well, we allow Him to lead us through His Word. I want you to know that the final authority in your home ought to be right here. Y'all listen to me. There's enough Bibles sitting on tables that's got too much dust on them. As families, we need to open up the Bible and allow this to have complete authority over our home. When's the last time you heard people say, no, I can't do that because God told me I can't? When's the last time you heard a father or a mother say, no, this is what we're going to do because this is what God said? I want you to know we need to allow the Word of God to have dominion over our home. I pray that this Word would have dominion over the opinions you hear. I pray that this Word would have dominion over the thoughts that you have. I pray that we wouldn't do it the way society expects us to do it, but we would do it according to thus saith the Lord. Why do it that way? Because God said so. May I tell you, our homes need to get back to the Holy Bible. I want you to know, if you got a, got a copy of God's Word today, would you hold it up? I want you to know we need this. Our homes need this. May I tell you, this still works today. There's still power in this today. There's still dominion in this today. I want you to know that your home will only be as successful as you give your home to the Word. And the more you submit to this, the better it's going to get. And you know something else? How do we allow the Lord to lead us? Is through His Word and through His Holy Spirit. The loudest voice in our home ought to be the Spirit of God. Did y'all hear that? The loudest voice in our home ought to be the Spirit of God. We got to quit doing what we think is best. And we got to do what the Lord tells us to do. We need to follow His leadership. Fathers, husbands, this needs to be number one. Wives, this needs to be number one. Children, this needs to be number one. Well, I don't want to do that. Then there's going to be failure. There's success in this this morning. It's been proven. Hello? It's been proven over and over and over again that if we would give ourselves to God and to His Word and to His Spirit and allow His Word and Spirit to lead us, let me tell you something. We're, we are allowing opinion to lead our homes today. We are allowing psychologists to rule our homes today. We need God to lead our homes. We need His Word to have and be the final say in our marriage and in our home. 
I want you to know there is an authority over us and it's Jesus Christ. Another authority that he put in the home is the man over the wife. No, wives, before you throw him books at me, I didn't write this. The Lord wrote this. And the Bible says, y'all be easy on them amens now. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. God created the home for there to be leadership. He wants number one. And then number two, leadership role in the home is the husband. Is the husband. A lot of times that's not popular today. And a lot of times when that is mentioned, it is thought to be demeaning to the other side, to the other party. God did not write this to be demeaning to anybody or put anybody down. God wants there to be success in the home. And if there's going to be success in the home, we need to submit ourselves to His pattern. And his pattern is that he is to be the leader of the home, and then the man is to be the leader of the home. Now let me tell you something, men. It's not a dictatorship that God gives you over your home. You are to lead your home as Christ leads you. Y'all hear this? I'll never forget going down to Houston, Texas one time. I was going to M.D. Anderson to a surgery. And I heard on the radio these people on the Christian station talking about marriage. And all the time, wives, submit yourselves. Wives, submit yourselves. Wives, submit yourselves. And that's what they were talking about. And all the time I hear about how we need to submit ourselves. And I got to thinking and the Lord convicted me about leadership. And you know, we're told to submit, but I wonder today, do we have leaders that are worth following? And I wonder today if it's not the submission thing that's the problem, but is it the leader thing that's the problem? Because we say, wives, get behind us and follow us. Do they have anything worth following this morning? And I'm not trying to be ugly, I'm not trying to be demeaning, but I want you to think about something. Think about the uh, USA. Think about our problem today. A lot of the problem today is society don't want to follow the leadership. And you know why we don't want to follow the leadership? It's because there's not a lot of leaders up there worth following. Amen. And that's why there's failure in our nation because there's not a lot of leaders worth following. And there's times in our homes that my wife is not following me because I'm not worth following. We need to understand as leaders, we need to put ourselves in the best position so that we can lead as God leads us. And this is what I learn about leaders. The greatest leaders are the best followers. The more you follow Jesus, the greater the leader you will become. And as I said, this is not a dictatorship, but this is simply a role that God has placed in the home that when it comes to spiritual things and it comes to the things of the Word of God, men, you are the one that has the responsibility to fulfill this in your home. And you think you got power and you think you've got all this. Well, friend, with all of that comes great responsibility. Because when I stand before God, I'm going to stand accountable for what kind of leader I was in the home. And we gripe about our kids and our wife. Well, they won't follow us. Sometimes we're not worth following. Let's just be honest, okay? But let me tell you something. Jesus is always worth following. And we need to get behind Jesus. And men, we need to get behind the Lord. And homes, we need to get behind the men as He is behind the Lord. And allow Him to lead you as the Lord leads Him. And one thing that I can honestly say, and I'm going to get in trouble... But my wife's been known to be hard-headed, but I am too. But I can honestly say that every time that it's come down to it, she has allowed me to lead come when it comes to spiritual matters. And when it comes to things that I need to step up, she's always allowed me to. And there's times that I didn't step up that she looked to me and I should have stepped up and she had to make those decisions because I wouldn't step up. Friend, that shouldn't be there. There needs to be a leader in the home. And God appointed men to be the leaders of the home. Men, with that comes great responsibility. You make sure you're following Jesus. The thing that scared me, to, the scariest moment of a husband and a father is when I moved to Hamburg, Arkansas. That was the scariest moment of my life because I uprooted five people and carried them to a place they've never been before. And you know what my wife said? That night you called Brother Norman. I said, Lacey, what do you think? 
She said, "Uh uh-uh, don't you put that on me. (laughs) Don't you put that on me. She said, you need to find out what God wants, and I'll follow you whatever you want. Whatever you think is his will, that's what we're going to do. Friend, that's leadership. That's what God designed. I looked to God, and I said, this is what the Lord wants. They got behind me. That's what God desired. Now, we're not always that way, okay? But we try to be every day. We try every day to allow him to be the governor of our home and the king. We try every day to submit ourselves to what he wants. I want you to know there must be leadership in the home. But number two, there must be submission. Look back in Ephesians 5 and 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. I want you to know if the Lord is going to be the leader of our home, we must be willing to submit ourselves to the authority of God. If God is the leader, then we need to submit to the leader. We need to submit ourselves to God. Oh, that mamas and daddies would submit themselves to the Word of God. Oh, that mamas and daddies would submit themselves to that sweet, tender voice inside of the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that we would submit ourselves to God in every function, in every action in our life. I pray every time the Spirit calls us that we answer. I pray every time the Lord said, do this, we do that. I pray every time He says, go here, we go there. I pray that we would be completely submissive to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God. We need to submit ourselves to the Lord. If He's going to be the ruler of our home, friend, we have to submit to Him. The word submission means to yield, to resign or surrender to power or authority of another. We must give ourselves to the leadership of the Lord. We must give in and we must surrender and yield ourselves to the Lord. May I tell you that we need to submit to his word this morning. We need to submit to the Spirit of God in our life. I pray that our marriages would submit to the Lord. You know why 30% of those marriages of Christian people end? Because a lot of times there's one in that marriage not willing to submit to God. And I've counseled many, many people that they're going through a lot in their life because they've not submitted themselves to the Lord. I said this last week, I'm going to say it again. If you can't get along with God, you can't get along with anybody. May I tell you that He is the easiest to get along with? Because He forgives us when nobody else will. He loves us when we're not worth loving. And friend, if we can't get along with Him, something's wrong. We need to submit to Him this morning. And do it His way. And every time that a broken marriage comes before me, and and I, I try to work with them and try to help them, and I try to counsel them through the Word of God, it's simply because somewhere or another, back yonder somewhere, we quit submitting ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We must submit ourselves to the Lord. Homes, are you submitted to the Lord? Men, Women, are you submitted to the Lord? And then he goes a step farther. As I am over the church, I have put the husbands over the wives. And as the church is to submit to me, I want the the wives to submit to the husbands. And that's hard to do sometimes. And like I said, a lot of times it's not done because we don't have leaders worth following. But ladies, may I say this is a command that God wants to be followed. May I tell you that he wants you to get behind your husbands. He wants you to get behind your husbands and encourage them in the Lord. But we had amens all morning until now. God wants the ladies to submit to the leadership role of the husband. I want you to understand today that when we submit ourselves to God, when wives submit to the husband and the children submit to the parents, I want you to know things come from that. Number one, there's peace when we truly submit ourselves one to another. When we submit ourselves to our husband, when we submit ourselves to the Lord, there's going to be peace in our home and in our life. I don't know about y'all, but my home could always use more peace. 
There's more confusion in our homes today. And we need peace. How are we going to get peace? By submitting ourselves to the Lord and submitting to ourselves to the leadership that God has put in the home. Another thing that we get from submission is protection. Every time we submit ourselves to the Lord, every time we submit ourselves to our husband, there will be protection that comes in our life. When we submit to God, God puts His hand over our family. We need His hand over our family. And may I tell you today that husbands, if you get behind the Lord, you will lead your home in a way that will protect them. Wives, if they're submitting to God, listen to your husbands. You may not always understand it, but if they're following God, they're doing what God wants them to do, and it's to protect you and bring peace in your life. Don't look at it as a dictatorship. Look at the blessings that can come from doing it God's way. Child of God, we've got to get back to doing it God's way. I want you to look in Ecclesiastes 4 and we're going to be done. Are y'all still awake this morning? All right, y'all stay with me. We're almost done. The third thing that we need in our marriages is companionship. I want you to understand this today, and I want everybody to listen and get this, that your spouse should be your best friend. And I mentioned a little bit of this last week, but we have got in our homes, in our marriages, that we just see each other in passing. I know me and Lacey are guilty of that a lot of times. But in our home, God desires the husband and the wife to be companions one with another. That's why he created woman so that man would have a help me. Adam would have somebody all the time with him. And let me tell you something. If there is a companion in my life, it ought to be my wife. If there's anybody that I talk to, it ought to be Lacey. If there's anybody that I'm friends with, it ought to be my spouse. Sometimes our marriages get broken because we have better friends outside the marriage than we do inside the marriage, okay? Your spouse needs to be your best friend, okay? I, want to, I love this scripture. Notice what it said in verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I love that. Isn't that beautiful? May I tell you, your spouse ought to be your best friend. God didn't want us to be alone and live by ourselves. If God has somebody for you and you found that somebody, then submit to Him and marry them and have that companionship one with another. Let me tell you something. God put Lacey in my life for a reason. I'm not to treat her like a doormat. Listen to me. I'm not to treat her bad. I'm not to belittle her. I'm not to walk over her. She is to be my best friend. If there's anybody that I'm in unity with, it ought to be my wife. If there's anybody that I'm getting along with, it ought to be my wife. And so many times we go home and we don't get along, so we just leave and we go make other friends and we do other things and friend problem comes from that. Let me tell you this morning. You allow your spouse to be your best friend this morning. And you allow them to be number one in your life after your relationship with Jesus Christ. And your wife ought to mean more to you, husbands, than hunting, than fishing, than football, than anything. Wives, your husband ought to mean more to you than shopping, than work, or any other thing that you like. I mean it. They need to be number one in our life. And marriages get broken down because we put things before our spouse. There's not but one thing you put before your spouse, and it's the Lord himself. And number two, you make sure that your spouse has their place. And you treat them with all the love and compassion. You forgive them. You be faithful to them. You be trustworthy with them as Jesus has been with us. You be to your spouse. Oh, what a great example we have before us. Isn't Jesus a great example to follow? He said, you submit to your husbands as the church submits to me. So that's the picture. 
That's what He wants us to do today. He wants us to look at His relationship with the church and realize that that same relationship and those things apply to our marriage. Hey, you ought to be in love with your wives, men. Not one amen on that. You ought to be in love with your wife. Every day ought to get better and better and better and better. I've heard it so many times, preacher, I, I fell out of love. That's got to stop. That's got to stop. We fall out of love because we quit putting them first in our life, okay? That's got to stop. And we got to let them be number one right behind Jesus. We got to let them be right behind Jesus. Hey, God knows what he's talking about. I imagine some of you think, my goodness, he's only been married 10 years. What is he going to tell us about marriage? I don't know. I'm still working at it. It's a work in progress. But I do know this. If there's success in our marriage, it's going to be because we've submitted to the Word of God. May I tell you, I'm not up here telling you what I think you ought to do. I'm telling you what God told us to do. And what God expects for our home. And friend, that's when peace and protection and happiness and joy is going to come to our marriage and to our home. Now I want you to stand with me this morning. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. Brother Norman, if you can prepare a hymn of invitation. And this morning I want to ask you, these altars are open. If you feel as though, men, you have not been the leaders that God wants you to be. I pray that you will do what needs to be done so that you can be obedient to the Lord. To be that leader that God wants you to be. But listen to me. If you're here this morning you've never been saved, I pray you get saved today. There's only one way to be saved and it's through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've never been saved, I want you to walk this aisle right now and let me show you how to be saved. If you have a decision to make, let's do that this morning.